Good day to you. Welcome to Cross Time with Pastor Curtis. I'm Pastor Curtis Hutchinson here in the studio at Crossway Church in Queen City, Texas, and I'm glad to be gathered around God's Word with you today. So let's uh, grab our Bibles. Let's grab our Bibles and get over in 1 Peter. Our, our, our present Bible study is in 1 Peter. We're in chapter 3 today. So you want to get your Bibles if you can, unless you're working or driving or something of that nature. But you want to follow along, and you'll probably want to write a few things down or make a mental note of it to go back. And when you get your Bible later and look over these things that you will now hear, and that is what a faithful Bible student does. And I'm, I'm thankful to, to, to know many people like that that will hear the Word and, and get their Bibles and get in the Word and, and allow the Holy Spirit to impart the truths of God's Word into their hearts. And this is uh, going to be a great, great Bible study today. There's nothing in the whole world like a Bible study, the truth of God's Word found in its righteous context. Uh, while you're getting your Bibles and getting ready and getting comfortable there, situated, I want to remind everybody that Robin and I will be in Austin, Texas this weekend in the morning at 10 a.m. and Sunday morning at 10 a.m., at the House of the Living God with Pastors Jonathan and Kimberly Bateo. And uh, we're just so excited about being able to go there and be a part of that congregation and share the great gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you the focus of Calvary, the gospel, the power of God. God moves, God saves, God heals, God delivers, God guides His people farther along in this great truth of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and what He did for us at Calvary. And uh, if you need directions and you're anywhere close to there and you want to come, just look on my Curtis Hutchinson or my Pastor Curtis Facebook page. You'll see it. Or you can always email me at curtishutchinson at att.net. We'll get you the information out. Love to see you there this weekend. Going to have a grand time in the Lord. All right. Here we are at 1 Peter chapter 3. This is part 6 on this 24th day of March 2023. Let's look in verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. And uh, I, I always try to point out the exclusivity of, of our God. One God, one Lord, one faith, one people of God, not two different. There's only one God, one Lord, one faith, one object of faith. There, 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 there's, not, there's not many except in man's miserable and confused uh, rebellious hearts. And, 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 and we're going to see some powerful things today that you and I as Christians need to see. We need to know this. If, if we don't know these things, we'll end up very miserable. So pay atten close attention today. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and His ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And here we see the contrast between the righteous, which the Bible says do righteously, and those that do evil. Righteous do righteous, evil do evil. Do sometimes the righteous do evil? Absolutely, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, because we've believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did for us at Calvary. He that knew no sin became our sin-bearing offering that you and I might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, and, and, and I have to bring a, a, out a point here before we move on, and I do want to move on past this and get into where we are going today. But I, I wanted to mention this. I know the Lord wants us to see something here. That just because we are righteous in Christ in our position doesn't mean that we always are doing righteous things in our condition. And the proof of that is, if you back up to verse 7, 
you find Peter saying this, Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them, your wives, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. A righteous person's prayers can be hindered. How is that? Well, we see here in verse 12, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Now, this speaks of the righteous who are righteous in Christ because of their faith in his death, the shedding of his blood for the forgiveness of their sins. But because we don't always experience this fruit of righteousness, for example, if a, if a husband was not treating his wife, read it again, verse 7, that you are to give honor unto your wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Number one, just keep it on the simple terms. Our prayers as the righteous people of God in Christ Jesus, our prayers can be hindered. You look at Peter in Galatians 2. Write it down. I talk about it all the time because it's the Christian's billboard right there. It's never meant to be removed. That billboard of that we can uh, in a moment's time, and we all have in a moment's time moved away from faith in the sacrifice of Christ, which is the only true avenue of having faith in Christ, to faith in ourselves or faith in something, someone else or faith in our doing something else in a moment. And that right there is where the face of the Lord is against them. What Peter did in in Antioch, it was evil. Now, Peter was righteous, but what he did was evil. And it says that the face of the Lord is against them, resisting them that do evil. Have we ever done evil? Absolutely. As Christians, have we ever done evil? Absolutely. Only a liar who's still doing evil by lying would disagree. Doesn't mean we're not righteous. Peter remained righteous and just before God in his positional in his position, but in his condition, in his experience, the face of God was against him. Think about that. The face of God was against him because he was, Peter was in fact doing evil. Dissimulation, hypocrisy is evil in the eyes of God. So I wanted to point that out today before we move on because it all flows here in a context. You can't just open the Bible, grab a verse and say, I'm doing this today. That's make-believe. That's pretending. That's some kind of witchy religion. It don't work that way. You have to be led by the spirit of truth into all truth and he determines what truth you need today. That's why you must be an avid student of the word of truth. Hallelujah. Now watch this. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? And again, who, 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 who is it who's going to harm you if you be followers of that which is good? That's what Peter should have remembered when he was in Antioch. Who, who's going to harm you while you continue to do that which is good? But Peter didn't continue to do that, which is good. He heard them folks from Jerusalem was coming. He got up and pushed off on them Gentiles and, and began to favor again those people who did not have their faith where his faith had been also in the Lamb of God, in Christ crucified, in the Savior. And he favored them. He feared them. So that's evil. Watch this. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But, and if you, and all this is tied together now. Don't try to uh, take a verse and pin it over there, do something with it today, and then take the next verse and pin it on the wall over there and try to do something totally different. The Bible, this is a letter, one letter, and it's to you and me, so let's pay attention. But, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, and this means don't, don't avoid suffering for righteousness' sake because if you do, 
That means there's some evil going on there. There's some evil going on there. That's what Peter did, isn't it? He, he wanted to avoid the suffering that he would have experienced had he not respected and feared those men coming from Jerusalem. But something worse happened. The face of the Lord was against him. I'd rather have men against me than the face of the Lord against me. Come on, somebody. I'd rather have men standing against me, and they will, as long as you're becoming more and more determined to know nothing but Christ and Him crucified. Most of that which is called God is going to laugh at you and shun you and criticize you and say th negative things about you, not knowing the, the, the move of the Holy Spirit. I mean, the move of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, is to deliver us who are alive always unto the death of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, of. of 4 verses 11 through 13. In, in that context there, it reveals what true faith is. I have believed, therefore I have spoken. And what's he talking about? Right there with that, the Holy Spirit always delivers us who are alive unto the death of Jesus that we might express the life of Jesus. That is the faith in that is the vocabulary of true biblical faith. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Watch this now. But, and if you suffer for righteousness sake, which is what Peter wasn't willing to do, at least in that moment that took place in Antioch. Now, Peter went on and suffered for righteousness sake. Believe me, he went on and suffered, died for righteousness sake. But we have to grow. We have to learn. What was going on there in Peter's life, he was becoming more and more determined not to trust in anything than the death of Jesus. The Christ who died for him, gave him new life, justified him. And that was the message Peter brought to him in Galatians 2. But and if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you and be not afraid of their terror. Neither be troubled. What? Who's terror and who's troubling? Those who are enemies of the cross. Even many today who would use the word cross and, and, and talk about the cross to only bring you into their mixture. Think about it. Think about it. This is a, this is a message of love today. It, 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 because those same people who will trouble you are, will tell people you're not loving. And let me say this today before we go any further. If you find a camp... A camp, a congregation that's all about the sacrifice of Christ. And you want to you be a part of that congregation because it carries with it the sound doctrine of the Word of God. But then you just have some deeper spiritual need and you need a touch from the Lord. You, you need some folk over here that know about the Holy Spirit. So you're going to go over here and get you a touch. Hey, let me tell you something. That's foolishness, and that is a proof of ignorance and a lack of knowledge because it's also a proof that we don't believe, whether we understand it or not, we don't believe it, but we're on search for some other power source. You can't separate the Spirit of God from the blood of Jesus. They can't be separated. The Holy Spirit only bears witness with the blood of Jesus. And we have Christians who are doing that. Well, I like the sound doctrine, the focus of the, the cross and all the scriptures. Boy, that's sound doctrine. But when I need a touch of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to go over here. No, you're going to get a touch of something that's going to cause you great harm wherever over there is. What you need is to begin to learn the power of the cross, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Now watch this. But, and if you suffer for righteousness sake, that means for trusting in the cross alone. That's where you're going to suffer, my friend. People use phrases like, you know, and they say like, 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 like Andrew told me yesterday, as uh, we were talking back and forth, like, like, you know, they say, well, you know, uh, Preaching the cross is, is the same as, as sitting at the feet of Jesus. Same as this, same as that. Well, how come there's no offense when you talk about sitting at the feet of Jesus? How come there's no offense when you talk about all these other things? The, the cross is the offense, my friend. 
And all these other things. There's nothing wrong with talking about sitting at the feet of Jesus and we need to stay at the feet of Jesus. But if we leave out the focus of the Lamb and what He did at Calvary, we don't even understand what sitting at the feet of Jesus is. we got to carry the message that saved us and keeps on saving us and keeps on giving us the power of God that allows the power of Christ to rest upon us. Even in a time when most of the church has a lot of entertainment and a lot of hype going on, calling it the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit bears witness with the cross, not saying the cross, but a heart that's trusting in their union with Christ in his death. Hallelujah. Watch now. But, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are you, and be not afraid of their, those who aren't willing to suffer for righteousness' sake, (laughs) be not afraid of their terror, and it means threats. That's what the word means. Neither be troubled. Don't be troubled. You're, listen, troubles come in your way by people you would have never imagined. I mean, the, the devil, the, let me say this to those who are, uh, have learned the message of the cross and can teach it like nobody's business. The devil, my friend, and all his hordes of demon activity have a whole new higher level of onslaught to bring toward us. The more mature you become, the greater and more deceitful and deceptive the enemy's threats are against us. That which would have more of a possibility of us putting the cross down. Us staying in a place where we see it's wrong, we know it's wrong, and any excuse we give for staying there is wrong. And when that takes place, we become saturated in that which is wrong, and then we no longer even think it is wrong because now we're a part of the leaven. I'm telling you, the longer you stay in the the avenue of holding dear the cross and, and stay sacrificially minded, which is Christ-minded, the more and intense the warfare will become. And you need to know these great truths that you don't have to be afraid of their threats. You don't have to be afraid of the trouble that tries to come your way. Because, listen, the Lord, the eyes of the Lord are over you who are righteous and who are found walking in the way of his righteous steps. Psalms 85, 13, write it down and shout the high praises of God. Let's read it today, Psalms 85, 13. And righteousness shall go before you and shall set them in the way of his steps. Let's go, let's go there and look at it. Psalms 85, 13, right here it is. How beautiful is it? Now, when you talk about righteousness, you're talking about Christ crucified. He's our righteous one, our righteous Lord. And what he did there, Isaiah 32, 17, gives us the, the work, what it is, and the effect of righteousness there at Calvary. And that which we become, been robed with, the path our feet is in. Watch this, not so beautiful. You can't talk about righteousness without talking about the lamb crucified. You can't do it. If you are, you you got two different things going on there and they need to come, they they always have to come back together to the get together place and that's at the sacrifice of Christ. Watch this now. Psalms 85, 13. Righteousness shall go before him, Christ, and shall set us in the way of Of his steps. Did you get that? Righteousness is what went before him. And righteousness is what has set us in the way of his steps. That path of righteousness. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs 4.18 tells us that the path of the just, which is the path of the righteous, shall become brighter and brighter and brighter. If you don't understand the cross of Christ for your daily living, for your daily sanctification, for your daily power, your daily sustenance, your daily everything, then my friend, you're just we'll just end up with some something imaginative in our heads about some path that's getting brighter when it's really our king and his way of the cross that is getting brighter. Think about that. It's the path of the just. What path is that? 
Jesus is the path of the just. He's the way of the just. His way is the way of Calvary. Hallelujah. That, my friend, is what's getting brighter and shining more unto that perfect day. Is that what's shining brighter in your hearts today? Watch this now, verse 15. Now, this is where we're trying to get to today. But, everybody say, but. you got to think about that. This is the alternative. This is the alternative Get this now. That's why I went back and read these things because we end up now with a but. You, this is for you who are willing to suffer for the sake of righteousness, which is an experience of having to deal with threats, the experience of having to deal with trouble that's coming your way because of your determination not to know anything other than Christ and Him crucified, to preach the Lamb, to magnify the Lamb, to worship the Lamb, hallelujah, to be able to partake of that divine nature, which is, get ready for this, the nature of the Lamb, hallelujah. Glory be to God. You, you're not partaking of the Lamb in any moment that you're not trusting in the Lamb, meaning, meaning that you're not trusting in the crucified Lord. There's where he saved you and there's where all things come to you through. And there's where the, it's the only door that God has offered himself and to give of himself all things to those who believe upon him. And get this all important truth. We can't offer anything to him except by faith back in that what became our door through that door. I can't worship God in spirit and in truth unless the cross of Christ is where my faith is. I can't worship God. I can't praise God. I can't give any offerings to God unless I'm giving to Him through my faith in the sacrifice of Christ. That's where my union with Him exists. That's his door to me and my door to him. Not just my door to heaven when I die. It's my door to offer anything and everything to him just as it's his door as well to offer everything to us. When you move away from that door, you've moved away from reality with God. And, we, and then we have these mirages, these doors that Satan paints as, as like this is the real door now for uh, uh, a financial blessing. This is the door for deliverance. This, no, there's only one door. And Jesus spoke of himself as being that door. And it's the only door. Let me say it again before we move on. God has offered the only door in which he comes to us through as the sacrifice, the death of Christ. And he offers only that door through which he came to us to be able to bring us to him and for us to be able to offer anything to him. This is why the church has got to come back to a focus of the cross. And when they do, you know they're there because that is what their mouths are speaking. We have believed, therefore we have spoken. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13 and you'll see the focus of the Holy Spirit which becomes the focus of the child of God which becomes the declaration of the child of God and there is the experience of revival and it does not happen outside of that. There is no revival unless a child of God comes back to Calvary. Comes back there. When they do, they're boasting in that. They're boasting in that. And there is where God gathers his people and there is revival. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Watch this now verse 15. But if, if you're suffering, when you're suffering for righteousness sake, happy are you, but don't be afraid of the threats that come. Many people have walked away from the stirring of God in their hearts when they begin to hear the scriptures in the light of the one who said the scriptures are written of him and the volume of the book was written of him and he is the living word of God, and their hearts begin to stir when the Holy Spirit moves upon them uh, uh, concerning the word and the sacrifice. Hallelujah. But then people begin to mouth about all that. Negative things. These are enemies of the cross. 
in any way, form, or fashion, that they belittle in any way the cross, even comments is that we don't have to uh, have redemption in all that we're about, in all of our messages. I've said it for 19 years that ev- there can be 10,000 sermons, but the message in every the message in every sermon has got to be Christ crucified. If you disagree with that, it, you're really disagreeing that every message needs to have the lamb in it. I don't see how we could move away from ever discussing the lamb. Hallelujah. I don't see how we could ever do that. And only a deceitful, uh, deceptive uh, 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 heart could do that. Someone who's been ministered, influenced by uh, satanic, demonic influence could, could say those things. There's nothing that needs to be without the lamb involved because if that's the case, Jesus said, you're doing nothing. You can do nothing without me, John 15, 5. We don't talk about that Bible verse near enough, but the Lord has been reminding me of it for months and months, the last couple years really, that I can do nothing without Him. That means every time I fail, it is something I'm trying to do without Him. If my message is without Him, it is a message that can produce nothing but my impartation to some man, which is a, a, a boatload of chaos and mess. I can't impart anything except the gospel. I can place it on the table and the Holy Spirit imparts that which is imparted. Hallelujah. So watch this now. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness, that means humility, and fear. That means reverential fear. That means, that means you're with your value placed on God through your faith in what he did in his son at Calvary. There is no fear. There is no proper fear in God. There is no reverential fear in God that does not end up seeing the covenant. You need to write this down, Psalms 25, 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him. And He shows them His covenant. You need to write that down again back to the exclusivity. God's not just showing everybody His covenant. Now, He wants everybody to see His covenant. He wants everybody to hold dear His covenant. He wants everybody to talk about His covenant. He wants every message preached and taught to contain His covenant. Mm, Hallelujah. This is New Covenant. We're reading writings of the New Covenant. But Jesus said the New Covenant is in His blood. Therefore, every word we teach and preach that's not dipped in that blood, not seen through that blood, is something we're trying to do with it. But the Holy Spirit can't function in what we're trying to do with it. He only functions in that which He's able to show us. He's able to teach us. He's able to impart. Hallelujah. And He can't impart anything that's not dipped in the blood of Jesus. If it's not dipped in the blood of Jesus, what do we mean by that? We mean if we're not seeing through the lens of Calvary and uh, and receiving through our faith in the sacrifice, then there is not an impartation taking place that's not just humanly natural in that of man. And men can learn what the Bible says. And men can, can, and can bring scriptures from every direction concerning certain topics. But yet if the common denomination of what they're teaching and preaching is not all flowing together to the Lamb and His sacrificial work at Calvary, there's nothing there to... There's no power there to impart it into the hearts of Christians. And any refuting of this, any disagreement with this would never be with Scripture. It would always be just with words that men say. Because the Scripture bear witness, we can do nothing without Him. And if we don't know that that means without our faith in Him, meaning faith in His sacrifice, then we will still be out there in a boatload of dead works. Oh, they will have a great form of godliness, but they won't have any power beyond what men can do among men in their own wisdom entertaining one another. 
Hande Boshi Kataba. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We're in a massive revival right now. The church is, but it's not what men are calling revival. It's what God sees and calls revival. Hallelujah. What this is going to be very powerful, this 15th verse. I'm glad we've got a half hour left to, to walk through this because it is going to be a wonderful blessing for those who are learning to look at all things through the one in whom all things consist, Jesus Christ, meaning faith in his sacrifice. But, but, sanctify. That means set apart the Lord God in your hearts. In your hearts. Not over there. Not out there. God is, our Lord God is not set apart anywhere but our hearts. And you must understand this. You must understand this. When the Bible says sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, when the word sanctify is used, it's got to point you to Calvary because that's the place you were set apart and it's the only place through faith in the sacrifice of Christ. It's the only time that you and I are setting the Lord apart in our hearts. It's when, why, listen, not because we have, but while we are trusting in Christ crucified, we are at the same time by the Spirit of grace setting the Lord God, our Lord God, apart in our hearts. Get this now. Be ready now. And be ready. And be ready. Who's ready? Only those who have the Lord God set apart in their hearts, sanctifying the Lord in their hearts. And let me say it again. There is absolutely no place, no experience of God's sanctifying power outside of not a faith that has been, not a faith that was like when you got born again, but a faith that now faith is substance. Now faith is substance. What's the substance? It's the work of the Holy Spirit through Christ, meaning our faith in Christ's death. And that's the only experience of sanctification. There is no other. Now, if the church gets mad at this, it's because they've been brought to scriptural reality and it confronts our pretending and our make-believe. It confronts our feelings and our emotions, which scriptures have a priority and an authority over everything we feel, everything we think, all of our emotions. Scripture, the Word of God, is God and has complete authority over everything I feel, everything I think, all my emotions, what I've been taught by myself or by others, the Word of God in its righteous context has authority. Whether I like it, agree with it or not, I can't remove its authority. I can either fall under it and function in it, or I can be found rebelling against it by God, and His face will be against me because when I'm holding God's Word out of its righteous context, that's an evil thing. Evil is not just drunkenness and harlotry and adultery and lying and, and all the... Listen, evil... E Listen, anything that's not of faith is sin. And you would agree with me, wouldn't you, that all sin is evil. All oh, this is good today. Y'all okay out there today? Anything not of faith, the Bible says, our scripture, our authority comes from the word of God, and God tells us anything not of faith is sin. And all sin is all sin is evil. Think about that. That's pretty simple, pretty powerful, isn't it? And if we're not trusting in the Word of God in its righteous context, that's evil. That's evil. You say, well, what if I don't know? Listen, the Bible says ignorance is no excuse. It's, it's evil. Even if I don't know, I'm experiencing evil it's still evil. You say, well, I'm not responsible for what I don't know. 
Is that, is that right? You, 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 you've, been, you've been saved for how long? And the, the Bible, t- your, your, your scriptural authority tells you to be a student of the Word. Study the Word of God to show yourself approved. God approved of you and you trusted in the blood of Jesus. But then He tells you, get you a Bible, get the Word of God and study the Word to show yourself approved. And what you don't know can kill you. What you don't know can prevent you experiencing what you could have experienced. Amen, Brother Curtis. Let's look at this now. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And let me say this. Sanctification is not about what we do on the outside. Sanctification is what's going on on the inside. Yes, it has works that are a result from it, but the sanctification takes place on the inside. I'm not sanctifying myself by going and doing something. I'm sanctifying the Lord God in my heart by what I'm believing. And at the cross, He set me apart unto Himself in the death of His Son. And at the cross, through my faith in my Savior and what He did there for me in death is where I set Him apart. I chose Him where He chose me. I chose to believe in the place where He called me, where He was choosing me, where He's offering Himself for me. I chose to believe in that and I set Him apart in my heart. When he set me apart, he showed me the place where I now can set him apart. Oh, this is good today. When he set me apart in the death of his son, he showed me now where I can set him apart above all things, before all things, in my heart. It's not in what I do. It's in what I believe in. And My friend, if my believing's right, then my fruit will be right. But just because my fruit looks right to men doesn't mean it's the fruit of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, here we are back to the exclusivity, the Holy Spirit who is God only works within the perimeters of one's faith in what He did to sanctify them at Calvary, the death of Jesus. Never forget that. If you forget that, you'll live your whole life trying to sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Tells you where to do it in your hearts, but you and I, and we, I've been there trying to do it by what I, it's not by what you do, it's in your heart. Oh yes. If it's in your heart, that means your heart is believing unto righteousness, and that's what you were believing in that allowed God to save you. Call you just. Robe you in His righteousness. Put your feet in a righteous path. With your heart You believed under righteousness. That was where you were being born again. And now, your heart must continue to believe under righteousness. Yes, everything written in the Word of God can be experienced as the Spirit of God works the truth, leads you in the truth, only as your faith is in the sacrifice. That's what your heart is surrendered to. Your your heart is not surrendered to all the do's and the don'ts. Your heart is surrendered to what the Lamb did for you. And because of that, now the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace, the Spirit of truth can come along now and comfort you with the Scriptures that are written, guide you. He can guide you now in the footsteps of righteousness because your heart is given to the Lamb and His sacrificial work. Not just because... You had a born-again experience, but now, today, after 40 years, 50 years, you're coming back to true worship. You're coming back to the true place of sanctifying the Lord God in your hearts. It's not in your songs. It's not in your music. It's not in our doing. It's in our hearts because only with the heart can we set our Lord apart. Only with the heart can we believe under righteousness, not doing 
but believing. And proper believing brings about the proper doing. But the prop, what appears to be proper doing is only recognized by those who have their heart tied to their faith remaining in the likeness of the death of their Savior. Watch this now. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Set Him apart in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer. Look it up for yourself. It means to have a defense ready. Get that. I want you to see that today. This means a defense. Be ready to give your defense. What is our defense? It's the cross of Christ. It's Christ who is our refuge. My righteousness, my one defense. I have not two. I have one. Look, go back to verse 14. But and if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you. That means blessed are you. See, God sees you blessed if you're suffering for righteousness sake. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So when you're being criticized and, and people are coming against you and, 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 and all these things are happening because you become determined to know nothing other than Christ crucified, literally, be blessed because God sees you as blessed. And he tells you, don't be afraid of their threats. Neither be troubled by them. But here's what you do. And see, our doing is on the inside. Here's what you do when that's happening. This is all, this is all important right now. It's always important. But right now, for, for the things that have gone on over the last two or three months, it's all important. There will always be a sifting and a shifting. There will always be separation along the way. Look back at the Old Testament stories and all along the journey of the Israelites there were those who were revealed along the way as those who weren't really of Israel. Israel is really uh, those who believed in God's promise of a Savior through a sacrifice. And all along the journey, there'd be people dropping off, declaring we're as holy as anybody, but they were dropping off. Some God would even kill, open up the earth and swallow them up, and all sorts of things all along the journey. It's no different today, my friend. All along your journey, the more determined you become to know nothing but Christ and Him crucified, the same things are going to happen as happened back then. People are going to say, we're just as holy as all them, and oh, you don't have to talk about the cross all the time. Which there, God hears that as you don't have to talk about the Lamb all the time. Uh, God hears that as well. You go ahead, but everything you do without me is going to be you doing nothing in my sight. So, But look, look at what we're told to do. This is what we're told to do, and what we're told to do here in the midst of all these threats and all these troubles is on the inside. That's where all our doing takes place. That's where our doing takes place. And if that's where our doing takes place according to the Scriptures, then the, we become the Lord's responsibility, and He takes action on our behalf. He works through us both he works in us both to will and to do of that which pleases Him. Hallelujah. Watch now. This is what you do. Those of you who the Lord is bringing back to a focus of His Son and His Son's sacrifice, His focus. Those of you who are refusing to, to, to allow leaven into the camp and, and when, it's, when, when the rebukes are, are resisted and not heard, then you... Shake the dust off your feet and get up and get out because you know if you don't, you become saturated 
and blind to that which you yourself once, once warned about. So when trouble comes to the camp, my friend, this is what you do, and it's an inward work, a work of the Holy Spirit. And make no mistake about it, when this is your experience, you will have the power, the confidence to get up and to get out. Uh, it don't matter why you have thought you were where you were. You will have Holy Ghost assistance to get you up and out of where you are so that God can really use you in a way far beyond what you, the, the, the excuses you have been given. Well, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I know, what if God were given the power to really move you to the place he really wants you. Well, my friend, a lot of times that's going to come. And when that comes, it's going to bring threats and persecution. It's going to bring trouble. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Set him apart in your that means That means hang on to Calvary like never before. It don't mean anything else. If you, if you turned it into setting the Lord God apart in your hearts is some little devotion you're having every morning. Everybody needs that. But that ain't where we set the Lord apart in our hearts. That's some geographical place that we are on the earth. That, that ain't where the setting apart takes place. The setting the Lord apart in our hearts takes place through our faith and where He set us apart to be able to set Him apart. The only place... We're set apart to him, and he's set apart to us, is at Calvary in his death. You move away from that reality, and, you, and you'll be trusting in your little devotions, and your little morning sessions with the Lord are greatly needed. But your faith can be in that and not in the death of Jesus. It's very dangerous. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give your defense. See, this don't have... If, listen, our defense will always be of the carnal flesh unless we're learning what it means to set the Lord God apart in our hearts. If we don't know what it means to set the Lord God apart in our hearts, well, first of all, we're not going to be suffering uh, uh, for righteousness' sake because we don't even know what it means to set the Lord God apart in our hearts. That's Listen, that's what, that's what brings about the, 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 the trouble and the, and, and the threatenings. Jesus, and, we, and we'll see this, we'll see this, later on in Peter's writings that when Jesus was threatened, he didn't threaten back. When he was reviled, he didn't revile back. And the Bible tells us why. Because he was trusting wholeheartedly in the one who judges righteously. You see, the power of God and the focus of God is upon his righteousness, his righteous son and his son's righteous work. Get this now. Be ready always to give an answer. That means be ready always to give your defense. Your defense, my defense, flows out of a heart having been sanctified, or us rather, sanctifying the Lord in our hearts. That means He's sanctifying our hearts. That, don't, that doesn't take place in two, three. That takes one place, one place. Faith anchored in the death, the cross, the blood, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith anchored there, unmovable there. Seeing the word in that context. Walking in those righteous footsteps. All God's words are in righteousness, Proverbs 8 and 8. That would have helped many of our brothers who even have helped us through the years if they'd listen today. It would help them along. All God's words are in righteousness, Proverbs 8 and 8. And His righteousness is only revealed in the gospel, Romans 1, 16 and 17. And our footsteps, 
that we walk in are the footsteps of Christ's righteousness. Can't happen. Not one footstep unless our heart is trusting in. Literally, from the heart, we're trusting in what Christ did to sanctify us, dying for us. If the object of our faith is not the sacrifice, the death of Jesus, we don't know anything about. We don't know anything about sanctifying the Lord God in our hearts. But when we do come back to Calvary, then the Lord can once again be sanctified in our hearts. And then, watch now, we will always be ready to give an answer, to give the defense that we have. It's the cross. It's not what I think. It's not what I feel. It's not my denomination. It's not my preacher. It's Christ crucified. Now get this now, and I want to turn over there this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11. I want you to see this. I want you to see it in your Bibles. We talk about it. I want you to see it. For we which live... Who is that? That's not talking about physically living. That's talking about we who are alive in Christ Jesus. Everybody else is dead in their sins. You and I as Christians are dead now unto sin and alive in Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus. Listen, we, for we which live, are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. What, what's my answer for every dilemma? It's the life of Jesus being made manifest. That's why the Holy Spirit always, for us who are alive in Christ, delivers us unto death. What's He deliver us to? Death, the death of Jesus. Why? so that we can express, experience, and express, because there is no expression of Christ unless we're experiencing Christ. And the only experience of Christ is through a literal, deliberate, conscious faith in His death, in our union with Him in that death. We won't move away from this. We're going to the finish line with this. I hope you will be convicted and convinced by the Holy Spirit that this is what you need to be hearing, and this is what you need to be believing and this is where your feet need to be walking, hallelujah, in this great truth of Calvary. Watch now. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. It happens when our faith, our trust, is deliberately and consciously, I know what I'm doing. I'm trusting in my union with my Christ, my Jesus, in His death. Get this now. That's where we sanctify the Lord God in our hearts and this is where the Holy Spirit always delivers us to. So that, how often? Always delivers us unto death. Why? So that we can always be ready to give our defense. The cross is our defense. It's our one defense. And it is not working unless we are setting the Lord God apart in our hearts. That's sanctification to set apart unless we're sanctifying the Lord God in our hearts. He's not sanctified in our hearts because I pray, because I, I preach or I teach or I sing or I worship with tears coming down my face. Those are all things we've been given to do as blessings that can be a blessing but unless my heart is given to the truth of Calvary. That's where my union is. If it's not, I'm going to be trusting in what I preach or how I preach or I'm going to be trusting in the tone of my voice or I'm going to be trusting in the dramatics of, of a man. I watched a, a video of a man the other day. If I called his name, most, most of the church world would probably know him. He's up from up north somewhere and he's just, he's like he's getting ready to, he's getting ready, he, like he's getting ready to baptize somebody with the Holy Spirit. And he's putting on a show like he's getting ready, he's getting ready. Listen. He hadn't got anything to do with somebody getting baptized with the Holy Spirit except laying hands on them and believing. And all this show proves he's not sanctifying the Lord God in his heart. He's putting on a show. He's putting on a show. 
He's hyping the people up. And boy, are they hyped up. Oh, they think it's the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit only bears witness to the blood. The blood-dipped word. I want you to get that today. This is so powerful. We need this. Those that God has saved, all Christians need to be hearing this. The power only flows through Calvary's cross. Let me go back to what I said earlier for those who they appreciate the sound doctrine of the Word of God being taught by those who are looking through Calvary, but then they think they need to go across the street because they, those people over there got a corner on the moving of the Holy Ghost. No, they don't. There's only some appearance there. There's only some, some hype or some emotional. They th- no, 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 no. You, you don't have the right to call something the Holy Spirit except what the Scriptures say the Holy Spirit will be doing. You don't have a right to stamp Holy Ghost on something unless it's what the Scriptures say the Holy Ghost does. Church is far off track. Church doesn't know a thing about sanctifying the Lord God in their heart. You tell them, you you just quote that part of that Scripture and leave them alone, they'll go out and start trying to do all kinds of things, think that they're sanctifying the Lord God in their hearts. But see, the answer is right there before us. But because we're so prone to law and works, we see it says in your hearts, but then we go out and start doing stuff out here. And again, there will be works, but it's got to be the work of the Holy Spirit. And He only works through our faith in the sacrifice of Christ. If that's not what we're trusting in, if that's not what we're putting the bread of life on the table, In the context of, people aren't eating. People aren't drinking. There's an altar whereof we eat, Hebrews 13. Faith in anything other than the sacrifice eliminates them from the legal right to be able to eat from that altar. You need to read Hebrews 13. It's outside the camp of legalism. Outside the camp of hype. Outside the camp of everything that's not a focus of Calvary. That's, you got to get out of them camps. I'm talking to you today and you're hearing me. You got to get out of them camps. You got to get out of them camps. You got to get gathered up with people who are all about the sacrifice of Christ, all about the Lamb of God, all about Jesus and what He did at Calvary. You got to get out of that. That's where you're going to find the power to heal your body. That's where you're going to find the power for strength. That's where you're going to find the wisdom you need to run this race. And I'm thankful to be able to be sharing these great truths with you today. And I I have been tremendously blessed by the truths that's found here. The truths have to always be tied to the one who said he's the truth. You see, the Holy Spirit, 1 John chapter 5, tells us that the Spirit is truth. And Jesus said in John 14, 6, He is the truth. See, so everything has to be by the Spirit of truth through the one through the one who is the truth, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit's not going to point you and direct you and lead you in anything that doesn't liberate you from sin and give Him the liberty to work through you to bring about that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. My goodness, it's been a good session today. I hope you would share this on social media with everybody you know. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of those that carry this gospel. And we're going to run this race to the finish line. God bless you. I love you dearly. Thankful for every one of you. And I'm just believing the Lord is waking His people up unto righteousness, bringing them back to the proper focus as He gathers His end-time church around the sacrifice. I'll see you in Austin, Texas this weekend, I hope, there at the house of the living God. And I'm just so thankful for what's going on all around the world where God is able to find faith, that faith of His Son, 
the one who loved us and gave himself for us. If you want to be a part of this ministry, all you have to do is pray for us. And if the Lord stirs your heart to give to, the, to him through this ministry, you can do that at thecrosswaychurch.com or you can simply text the word GIVE to the number 903-231-5950. Don't forget about the YouTube channel. Everything we do gets uploaded there. There is so much material there. You will be blessed beyond measure. So check out the YouTube channel and check out the website. Click on the store. There are commentaries that you can order there that will help you in your journey back to Calvary to know nothing else but Christ crucified. The Lord is doing this great thing today. And there is already revival in the land. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified. We'll see you then.